Hi. My name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on using Adobe Prelude to Creative Cloud, the CC release. You're going to discover that Prelude is becoming increasingly necessary for a Premiere workflow, which is what I want to talk about today, is where Premiere and Prelude intersect, where you want to use Prelude, where you want to use Premiere. And once you discover that Prelude is an important part of the whole ingest process, I want to show you how it works, because there's a lot of cool features inside here. Today, I want to introduce Adobe Prelude and its interface, show how to review and ingest clips, show how to log clips, how to create subclips and comment markers, how to create rough cuts, which are essentially selects, and show how and why to export or send those rough cuts out to an editing program. Adobe Prelude is designed for the review, ingest, logging, selection, and export of tapeless media in preparation for editing. It was introduced with the CS6 release, and it's available only with Adobe Creative Cloud. Premiere Pro is designed to work with tape-based media. Prelude is designed to work with tapeless media. And there's a couple terms I throw around that I need to define. Ingest generally refers to importing tapeless media, while capture generally refers to importing media stored on tape. So if you hear capture, we're talking tape. If you hear ingest, we're talking tape less. And if you hear import, well, that's generally a file the computer can read already. One of the questions that I spent the last week researching is why even use Prelude? Well, there's stuff Prelude can do that Premiere Pro can't. Prelude can ingest tapeless media directly from the camera card in camera card format. It can copy files directly from camera cards. It can transcode files into new mezzanine formats. A mezzanine format is a video format that's not used for capturing at the camera and it's not used for distribution on the web. It's an editing format. Popular mezzanine formats include ProRes and AVC Intra, DNX HD, high quality formats specifically designed for editing effects and color correction. Prelude can rename files and add metadata during ingest, including working with XMP files. You can copy files to multiple destinations at the same time. You can verify that your file copies are bit accurate. You can easily create and modify subclips and comment markers. You can organize clips into subclips and folders that can be read in Premiere, and it can be run by inexperienced users that don't know how to use Premiere. There's a lot that Prelude can do that Premiere Pro can't. So let me show you how to use Prelude to review shots from tapeless media in just the shots you need, either as whole or partial clips, how to log the clips you just ingested and add metadata, how to select the shots you want to use and build them into a rough cut, and then how to send or export those shots to Premiere Pro CC. Now we send if Premiere Pro is on the same system as Prelude but we export if Premiere Pro is on a different system or if we're sending it to Premiere Pro CS6 or if we're sending it to Final Cut Pro 7. Send is absolutely the fastest but doesn't include any media. Export is ideal when you need to have a package that contains both the XML file for transfer and the media files. Transcode. Transcode means we want to convert it from the camera native format, AVC HD, into something which is a more friendly editing package. Now you don't have to transcode. Premiere can edit AVC HD natively, especially if you've only got one stream of AVC HD. You're not doing any special effects. You just want to get it in, get it edited, get it out. Speed is everything and you want to keep your file sizes small. Don't transcode. Leave it native. But if you're going to do a lot of color grading, if you're going to do a lot of effects work, if you're going to do a lot of compositing or multicam work, multicam also requires transcoding. You want to convert it into something which is more editing friendly. To do that, click the transcode button. Now here, things get a little weird because when you click on the format, virtually all of these options are wrong. They are designed for distribution to the web. With the CC release, Adobe finally gave us three mezzanine formats that we can work with. They gave us DNX HD for Avid, they gave us AVC Intra, and they gave us ProRes. If you're on a Mac, your best option is to transcode to ProRes. If you're on Windows, a better option is to transcode to either AVC Intra or DNX HD. Let's select DNX HD first. There's our format. When we click on the presets, these are all the existing presets that exist that support DNX HD. 
the only two that you should consider transcoding to are the two formats, 220X and 440X. The X indicates that it's a 10-bit format, which gives us the color depth that we need for good color grading. 220 has a, a data rate of 220 megabits per second, and 440 has a data rate double that at 440 megabits a second. My general recommendation is work with 220X that matches your image size, your scanning, progressive versus interlaced, and your frame rate. If you need the absolute highest quality, then work with DNX 440. Most of the time for AVC HD or H.264 images where you're not renting high-end cameras, you're not working with really, really expensive lenses, you're not going to see a difference between these two formats. If you're working with high-end cameras, high-end lenses, and you're spending the time to light and focus, you will see a difference in image quality of 440 versus 220. For me, though, my best option is QuickTime. And when you select QuickTime, we have a bunch of options that open up and every single one of these is wrong. For whatever reason, Adobe did not ship any of the ProRes presets that would make transcoding into ProRes a piece of cake. At the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you a web link that you can use to download free presets, a bunch of them, like two or three dozen, which you can then load into Adobe Media Encoder for transcoding. Now, I'm going to set this to QuickTime and go to Presets, and there's all of our ProRes presets that we just imported into, AM, into Adobe Media Encoder. Let's transcode this into, he probably did 1080i, so we'll just do, change that to 1080p progressive. If you're transcoding, you can't verify bit by bit what the source file is versus the copy file. When transcode is not checked, you can bit verify it. For me, it's important to get this converted to ProRes, so I'm going to leave transcode on, leave verify off. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. You get access to more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 103. Thanks.